Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Me and Jesus. We have been going through the book of Matthew, and we have been looking at the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. We are on chapter 22, and for those of you who have not followed along, every video is accessible on YouTube or Coffee with Me and Jesus on Facebook. They're both Coffee with Me and Jesus, and it's the and sign, not spelled out. And so we are in chapter 22, and Jesus is giving a parable about the kingdom of heaven. And the story goes, there is this king whose son is getting married, and he has all these invitations, and he calls his servants to deliver the invitations to the guests. Well, some of the guests don't respond. Um, they just, they hear the servants say, here's an invitation, and they ignore it. They don't even respond. Some get the invitation and don't reply. I'm coming, yes or no. They just go right on there working, whether it's in the marketplace or the farmer's um, fields. They don't give a yay or an A. And then some of the people that were on the list, they slew the servants that were delivering the message to attend this wedding of the kings. So the king gets ear of that and he sends out his army and he kills the ones that were, were slain for delivering the invitation. And, Jesus, and the king then becomes concerned because he's got this big feast, his son's getting married and there are no guests. So he calls his servants back and he said, you go out to the highways, the byways, go into the villages, go everywhere, give everyone an invitation. Good, bad, it doesn't matter. Give everyone the invitation to come. And so the servants do so and the wedding takes place and the inv uh, invitations have been delivered and there's many, many guests. Well, as the king is walking around and greeting everyone, he, see, he sees a man, a person, that is without wedding garments. And he says, friend, where is your wedding garment? And the friend, the man, woman, it, I don't believe it's descriptive, has no answer for him. And so the king calls his servants, tells them to bind up the man, and throw him out into the outer darkness where there's gnashing of teeth and it's, it's basically hell, we know that. So in this story, it's a puzzle to me. It truly is a puzzle and I'd like to get some feedback because I've asked some others, um, brothers and sisters, and they really don't have an answer for me. They have their opinion, but it's not settling inside me. And I don't have the answer, but I prayed about it, and now I'm throwing it out to you. Now, we know that this is a story that Jesus is saying about the kingdom. So we know that the father is the king, and the son is the, the one that's getting married, and the bride is the one that's getting ready, and all these people are invited. In, there's invitations sent out to all these people. Well, the ones that, were, that he knew were the of the fold, those of the bloodline, the, the relatives, the family that he knew, they didn't come. But all these others out by out there, byways, highways, good and bad, those are all the Gentiles, the people all over, all over the world. And some are good and some are bad. But this one, this is my puzzle. Who is that one that shows up without wedding garments? I don't know. And I want you to pray and because I think this is a really, this is one of them secrets and it can only be revealed by the Holy Spirit, God himself. So pray about that because I thought, well, maybe it's Satan, but what would Satan be doing there? What, what would he be? That doesn't make sense to me. And so there's a lot of things within me and discussions that I've had with other brothers and sisters, but you, you search and, and see and give me an answer. Praise God, this is what the body is about, where we all come together and we're gonna rightly divide the word and we're gonna find out what that means because I don't really know what that means. 
So, okay, back to chapter 22. And that is a big part of chapter 22. But in chapter 2, there is also a confrontation of the Sadducees with Jesus. And I want to remind you who the Sadducees were. They were aristocrats. They were more concerned about politics and religion. And they... They were more uh, interested in the wealthy man. They they really didn't care what the common man had to say. They weren't they were not in at all interested in that, and they were so self sufficient that they really didn't incorporate God into the everyday everyday living. They didn't cry because they had a need for this or that. They were just self sufficient. And they denied any afterlife. This is the thing. They denied any afterlife, holding that the soul perished death and therefore denying any penalty or reward after the earthly, earthly life. They denied the existence of a spiritual world, angels and demons. So these are the people. These are the Sadducees that are approaching Jesus. And they want to know, should we pay taxes? And... Jesus tells him, give me a coin. And they give him a coin and he says, who is on that coin? And they uh, tell him that it's the, the Caesar, the government. And Jesus replies, then give to the government, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Now that's pretty self-explanatory brothers and sisters. Get your coin, your money's out. Who's on that money? Who, where does that money need to go? That money need, needs to go to the government because who's required of our monies today? The government, we have to pay taxes. We have to pay for food, the taxes, everything. There's government, it's all tied into the government. Give your money to the government. Give what belongs to God to God. Amen? That's so clear, cut, and dry. Okay, now, these same Sadducees, remember, they did not believe in resurrection, and they come back with G to Jesus with the second question, and they said, what about uh, Moses' law, uh, that if a man dies, that if there's no children, he marries, the wife marries a brother, now, what happens if that goes down to the seventh brother and then the wife dies? Which of the seven will that wife be married to? And Jesus looks at them and, and he tells them, you obviously don't know the scriptures or the power of God because in the resurrection, there are no marriages. When the resurrection happens, only who abides in heaven are angelic beings. They're not given in marriage and they are not married. And he says, I am the God of the living. Praise God. I'm the God of the living. I am not the God of the dead. They were astonished by the wisdom of Jesus and they just walked away. They, they didn't have anything else to say. Well, then in comes the Pharisees. And let me get, remind you of a little background of who the Pharisees were. They, in contrast to the Sadducees, the Pharisees were mostly middle-class businessmen. And then the Sadducees, there were 70 seats on the council. And the Sadducees possessed 70% of them, 70 seats. And there was only a few seats maybe one or two, that the Pharisees had. And so the Pharisees uh, were the, uh, they accepted the written word of God. They were more concerned about the written word of God. They believed the Torah, the Old Testament. And they believed, very much believed, that God controlled all things, yet a person's personal choice had a, 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 a had contributed to the outcome of that individual's life. And they did believe in the resurrection of the dead, and they believed in the afterlife, that you were going to be judged according to your life here on earth. And they did believe in angels and demons. So these are the, the, the Pharisees. We studied that earlier on when Jesus started getting um, confronted by the Sadducees and Pharisees. There was a 
a video about the Sadducees and Pharisees. Back to the Pharisees, these that I just read who the Pharisees were, once they heard about the what was hap what transpired between Jesus and the Sadducees, one of the Pharisees was a lawyer. And he approached Jesus. See, he thought he could outwit Jesus because he's the, he's the law. He's more into the law, the written law. And he says, which is the greatest of the commandments of the law? And Jesus said, first, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And then second, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law hangs on these two laws. And Jesus asked the Pharisees, what do you think of me? Whose son am I? See, Jesus always imposed a question with a question. And uh, the Pharisees, they said, you are the son of David. And Jesus said, well, how can David be in spirit, being in spirit, say, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit on my right side until I make your enemies your footstool. If David calls him Lord, how is he his son? The Pharisees could not answer that. They had no answer for that. And that's because Jesus' wisdom and his knowledge far, far exceeds human knowledge. It doesn't matter who you are. It, you, you can have all the doctrine and you can read this word forward, backward, no verbatim, scripture for scripture, have all the history. You can be a, 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 a great theologian, but when it comes to the word of God, the true knowledge and the true understanding is only imparted through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the very spirit of God. And so people, when we read these scriptures and we, we can read them and read them and read them. But if we don't read them and ask God for his divine knowledge, his divine understanding, his divine wisdom, we are going to be just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And that word which is interpreted as a seed is going to fall on some that it's going to go in one ear and out the other because they're not comprehending. They're just reading words, words, words out of the Bible. They're not even, it's not taking anything. It's just words. It's, it's, it's empty. And then there's some people that read the word, the seed, and they get, a, uh, they get it. They get in part and they rejoice over it. But troubles, trials, tribulations, the cares of this world come and choke it out. And then there's some of us that we read this word and we read it and it starts maybe to take a little root, but it becomes too intense and it doesn't last. But there are those of us, and let's strive to be those people that when we read the word, we read understanding that this divine impartation of knowledge and understanding and wisdom can only be obtained through the Father himself. And then that is a seed, the word that is planted in you and in me that some produce 30, some produce 60, some produce 100. So brothers and sisters, that is what Jesus is is teaching us and discipling us with. But however, I need some 100% uh, um, people that are watching and, and can help me with this understanding of this parable of the kingdom. Who is that person that got by, God was able to enter into the wedding and he didn't have any apparel. He didn't have the wedding apparel. Who was that? So help me out, brothers and sisters. Impart your divine knowledge and wisdom to me. And let's, let's let the iron sharpen the iron. 
Brothers and sisters, have a beautiful Saturday or Sunday, Sunday, and enjoy the day. It's beautiful outside here, and all praise and all glory to our Father. Amen. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, people, because God loves praise. He loves to bless his people. So let's just worship him in all things. Everything we put our hand to today, 